Hmm. G'day Trendsetters, Greg here from Fishplate Films and welcome to my first ever proper review of a product. Uh, I don't normally do reviews, but I feel that this was needed in this case of this piece of rolling stock. What we have today is a set of three Atlas Masterline Thrall 53 feet, I don't know how you say that, Thrall, 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 hmm, maxi cars, or should I say stack cars. So uh, up until now, the only stack cars I've had have been the Cato Maxiwell cars, and of course, you probably know that they're the best out there. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, detailed, they have the plastic metal injected molding uh, that they're made out of, so they're very heavy and beautifully made, run well, all that. But of course, you can't have a stack train full of Maxiwell cars. You need to mix it up a little bit. So I decided I'd get some of these, these Atlas Thrall 53 footers, Masterline, and check them out. So oh, now I read a re few reviews, and uh, a lot of people said they're having troubles with them derailing and not tracking very well and all that sort of thing. So what I've done is we'll pull them apart and we'll have a look, get into the nuts and bolts and see uh, what they're really like and whether you should put them on your layer. So let's have a look. Now, straight out of the box there, they look quite good. Uh, the ribs down the side, they're a nice looking car. They have, they have a good presence. They, they look good. They, look, they will look really nice with a little bit of weathering uh, just to bring out these ribs that are along the side here. Uh, etch metal walkways, very nice. Probably not as nicely done as the Kados, but pretty good. Uh, a lot of separately applied parts and some you have to apply yourselves, which there's no instructions come for these, which is a bit of a bummer. So I recommend you get onto the Atlas website, which they should tell you to do on the box, but they don't. But we'll get to that in a little bit later. Uh, these here are separately applied. These are the guides that uh, drop the containers in. These ones here, there's two little plastic two little plastic bags that come with the box. And they don't tell you what they are. Don't throw them away, you will need both of them. One of them contains these little uh, guide racks that guide the containers in. Uh, you need to uh, put them on with a little bit of CA glue. Not too fiddly, they're okay. And they guide the containers so they don't, so they don't hit the side of the cars. The ones on the end here, they're already applied. These ones are, but these ones are, you have to put on yourself. Now the lettering is very crisp, even the small stuff is legible, uh, nicely done, and uh, nice and clean, paintwork's good. Now on the brake end, the brake cylinder and the triple valve are all separate. The piping between the two is all separately applied, so it's very nice. The handrails, or should I say the foot rail, the steps here, very fine, and they're actually plastic, but they're, they're quite sturdy and very fine, so that, that looks good. These little handrails here, you can see them flexing there. Now they're pretty strong, they're plastic, they're very strong. Um, it took me quite a bit of strength to break two off <laughs> as I had them putting the couplers on and I didn't have uh, enough support on the foam sunk. Anyway, silly me, but they are quite strong, so uh, that's good. And I say the metal walkways at this end, uh, so the brake detail is good. The, there are brake pipes down the, that run the length of the car they're just moulded on along here. But uh, of course, that doesn't notice too much, so it's still pretty good. But the brake end is very good, the brake cylinder end. Very impressed with that. Now, the brake wheel end is also very good. Uh, nice fine details on the brake wheel there. Actually got a, a, uh, a moulded chain down there, which a moulded chain is really fine, so they've done an excellent job on that. Yeah, not a lot of brake piping on this end, because all the cylinders are on the other end, but still what needs to be there is there, I gather. Uh, the end, have got some little grab lines on the end here, they're actually metal and they're applied, so they're nice too. And uh, once again, the really fine scale foot rails there. They're very, very nice. These cars have a really nice presence, as I said before, they do look good. They're incredibly light, way too light. Um, you, you can't run them without containers in the middle of a train, you'll have to put a weight in them or run them towards the rear of the train empty. Uh, there's not much really you can do with them. There's nowhere to put any weights. I guess you could uh, weight some containers if you wanted to put them right up the front of a heavy train, but, but with a couple of containers in, they'd be okay. But definitely uh, very light when they're empty. So it's overall detail-wise, yeah, pretty impressive. Uh, not as good as the Kato's, but very, very close and, and very good value for the price. Now, let's get into the nuts and bolts. With the Kato's, if you had the Kato ones, 
you put the Kato ones together like this, put them together and click them in. Do not do that with these trendsetters. No, don't do it. You will break something. What you have to do to get these cars together. And once again, there's no instructions for these. You have to go to the Atlas site, which is, uh, you know, I think they need to put something in the instructions. Now, you turn them over like this. There's a screw here. Loosen that screw off a little bit. Not too much, just a little bit. That will drop the truck. The truck will drop down on a bit of a, an angle because the truck it is supported by this uh, coupling pin here, which is screwed to the car by this screw under there. So, we do that. Just, oh, just a little bit. Not too much. Now, see it's all, whoops. See, flopsy daisy now. So just a little bit, and then you should be able to, you gotta be very careful, get these in, and do the same thing as the Kato's, but just put them in on an angle and drop them in. And then, then what you have to do is turn them over and do this, do this screw up. So that's getting the cars together, that's one thing. Now, another thing is people have said that they derail, they don't track properly. What I did find is this truck here, when you do the screw up, when you do the screw that supports the truck, not the screw through the truck, the one that supports it through here, when you do that up and have it how it should be, the truck screw, when you have enough play in the truck that you think is right, it doesn't sit real square. It sits on a little bit of an atom, a bit skew if. So this truck here, the center trucks, you need to make sure that when you hold them up like this, the truck is level across. You might have to loosen the screw off a little bit, otherwise the truck sits a little bit like that. And so you need to loosen the screw just a tad so your truck can have a little bit of play and it sits level. Uh, all of mine on these, the three that I've checked so far were very tight and the truck was sitting on an angle and that would definitely make it derail. So check once you've assembled them and you've got them all together, loosen the truck off so there's enough side play that the truck sits level when uh, when it's hanging in the breeze, so to speak. Right, so after those truck adjustments, you made sure that all the trucks have just enough play in them so they sit level and will uh, give you a little bit of suspension over rough track work. The next thing we have to do is put some couplings on them. Now, the couplings that they come with are the Atlas plastic couplings. You cannot, for some reason, put a KD in that draft gear, in that coupler box, it won't fit. I don't know why Atlas have done that, uh, I figure maybe they were trying to keep the draft gear box to scale, I don't know. But it, also in the packet, on the end of the, the box, you get something that looks like this. And it's got more parts in that because I've used some. This is the replacement draft gear, so you can use KDs. I don't know why. But anyway, we'll show you how we put KDs on these things. And there's another problem with that too. You can't put the bronze centering spring from your KDs do not fit in the new draft gear. So here is the replacement draft gear box. It is literally, that's the original. That's the original, sorry. This is the original. This is the one that you have to replace it with so you can fit a KD. There is virtually I reckon half a millimetre or one millimetre of difference between these two. I have no idea why they have done that. It's, it's almost, when you do it, you have to check that you've got the right one every time because they're that close. But anyway, the original draft gear that comes with the car, you cannot fit a KD in them. So, let's get that undone and we'll show you how to do that. Now, I've already taken the original draft gear box off that obviously sits in here. Now they're sort of upside down, they're a bit funny. So this screw here, oh, I just looked in the light now, I can't see a damn thing, is very, very tiny. Be very careful you don't lose this screw or worse still, strip the thread. Right, once you've removed the draft gear, you think, okay, I can put a KD in there, it all fits in there. The only trouble is, there's no room for the brass centering spring. No, there isn't. 
is such a tight fit in here that the brass centering spring won't fit. So you're left with two options. What do you do? You put a normal KD in and don't have a centering spring, which really is no big deal, I don't think, unless you're doing automatic coupling everywhere. Or you can get rid of your normal KD and you can replace it with, and this is a scale head, and the new scale head KDs are really nice. Uh, this is a scale head whisker coupler. Now they have the tiny little whiskers springs on each side. You probably can't even see it there. But they will fit into there. And the little whisker springs will sit down each side of the draft box there and will give you some centering action. They're, it's still very tight, but you will get a little bit of centering action. Make sure that there's no burrs or anything in here and you must put in some KD graphite, well not necessarily KD, but some graphite powder. You know, scrape an old HB pencil in there if you want, but it definitely needs some dry powder lubricant in there, some graphite. So, then you have to snap the cover back on. You've got the two covers here. Now remember, they look almost identical. Alrighty, let's put a little bit of graphite. This is where I always make a heap of mess with this stuff. Whoa, there we go. Now, once you've got it installed, you have to make sure that the little whisker springs aren't sitting up above here. The little whisker springs, they need to be pointing out the front and not up on this ridge here so you don't catch them with the uh, the box cover, or should I say the, the, the lid. Alrighty, that's on. And we have got a little bit of centering action there. So that's good. Okay, we'll put it on the car now. Now, another thing I had to do, because the KDs, are, uh, even these new whisker KDs, this is a number 158, so it's their scale head coupler with the whisker centering springs, not the brass spring. I had to get a file, the end of a file, the, the handle, and just go through and just burr out, take the burr off the end of the KD. It was just, because this coupler box is such a tight fit, even the... Uh, the axle, I guess we call it, or the spigot that the, the coupler goes over, it's a tight fit as well. So all I had to, it was, um, it was just binding up. So just, just to take, where are we? Just ever so lightly, this isn't the, this is the handle end of the file. Just to get a little tiny little polish in there. And that was enough, so I got that centering action spring. Just take a tiny little bit off, just to get a little bit of, See that little bit of shine in there? That's all you need. And remember, lot put in some graphite powder. Now, when you're pushing the coupler box on, uh, you just can't go. You just can't go like that and push it on because you've got the walkways here. I've already the first time I did it, I almost broke the walkways off. So you can't get any, and you just can't push it from one side. Otherwise, you you sort of bend the car. So what I Managed to do is get a pair of mini pliers, put them on there, so you're actually pushing against the the uh, underneath of the car, and then go over the other side with your finger and, and push that way. Uh, it's it's quite a tight fit to get the coupler box back on, so you've got to be very careful, otherwise you'll damage all this and all these little parts here. So they are a little bit fiddly, trendsetters. Right, our truck's back on. Don't forget to put our little screw in here that holds the coupler box on or the draft gear box on. Don't over tighten it as soon as you feel a little bit of reaction and stop there, otherwise you'll strip it. Now with the truck, remember you need a little bit of play this way and you also need a little bit of play this way. So that's pretty good. Okay, happy with that. Righty, well I'll go and finish this off and then we'll check them out on the layout. Right, here's our cars on the layout. Now, one thing, uh, you have to roll them over to get to these screws, as I said before, to loosen the truck bolsters off so you can cook the cars together. So you have to roll over two at once and do that one, and then roll over all three at once uh, to get to the screw, because you can't do them like the Kato's. You can't do one and then clip the next one in. 
So when you roll them over, you run the risk of damaging all these little handrails, which I've already done. And so they're not the sort of car that you would take on and off your layout. They're sort of, once they're on, they're on, I think. Um, even weathering them, I'm debating whether to weather them in a three pack, just take them off and do them, because you don't want to undo these screws in here too often, because they're just in plastic and, and uh, yeah, you don't want to strip them. But on the lay, they look good. Uh, these ribs are really nice. You might say they're ribbed for your pleasure. <coughs> and with a little bit of weathering, these will come up really, really nice. I think they look really good. Not too much. I think they'd be just nice to get some shadow lines in here and a little bit of dirt on the end. They do look, uh, they look better than the Kato Maxi Well cars as far as design, I think. But they're, they're nowhere near built as well as the Kato's. But they're, you know, they're not too bad. They're, uh, Intermountain make a set of thralls as well, but they're very low detail and I don't know how, how well they are in quality, so um, uh, they don't have etched metal walkways and stuff like that. So these are probably the best thrall well cars that I've seen so far. So having a look at the articulated joint here, uh, we see these little metal uh, guide, guide racks or guide posts there, there what guide the container when it's coming down so it doesn't hit the side of the car. They're actually folded little bits of metal, so you've got to glue them in. They're a little bit fiddly, but they're not too bad. And they're actually metal, which is really a nice little touch, uh, as, as are these as well. Uh, as I said, the handrails are, you know, plastic, but quite strong unless you break them like I did. Uh, nice detail around the trucks in here and the truck support. There's a little, two little triangular brace bits in here that are used for the bolster to rub on in real life. Uh, they're actually metal as well. You have to make sure that they're not bent because they will foul the truck from turning as well. So that could be some of the reasons why people are saying that they are having derailments with them. These are not out of the box, put them on the track and run them. You have to tune them. As I said before, make sure your trucks in the centre here have enough free play both horizontally and vertically, like left and right and front to back, uh, but not too much. And also make sure that the... Uh, the screw that holds the bolts, the actual truck, truck, well, frame, I guess, is also done up and not too tight. Um, and also make sure these little ribs in here, you'll see them when you, they're like a little triangle a bit. There's two on this side and two on this side. They sort of in, sit in between each other like that. And if they, if they touch, you'll, you might uh, throw the car off the track. But once you've got all that adjusted, I think, I think they'll be fine. They're just something that needs a little bit of tweaking. Uh, but the, these little guides are really nice when you put them on, these metal guide posts or guide racks or whatever you want to call them. Uh, and, and what else? Yeah, really fine handrails. So let's put some containers in them and see what they look like. Well, I must say that these cars do look good with containers in them. They really, uh, yeah, they look, they look the part, I must say. Uh, a lot, you know, a bit heavier. Uh, still light. They're, they're the type of cars, as I said before, that you would only run them light at the end of a train or, the, you know, the end-ish of a train. And even full, I would probably put them, depending on how long your train is, Maybe in the middle or the, you know, the first two thirds, definitely, probably not at the front. Uh, but it just makes you run your railroad more prototypically. Uh, real railroads have the same problem with streamlining cars. So, you know, for operations, it makes it a little bit more interesting. You make sure that these cars are, when they're empty towards the rear of the train or, or they have to be loaded. So um, there's nowhere really you can put weight in them. They don't have any weight in them at all that I can see. So, you know, it's either put them in containers or you can maybe hide some weights in if you want to or, you know, just get your yard master to make the trains up properly, trendsetters.
Hmm. Well, what do I think, trendsetters? Uh, very nicely detailed. Yep, nicely detailed. I like the metal uh, super detailing bits, uh, the little guides for the containers, there's the little bolster rubbers on the end, uh, there's wire grab irons on each end of the, the couple ends of the cars. Uh, yeah, very nice, very nice. They have a real presence. They look real. They have that realness about them. I don't know whether it's the design of the car or I think it's probably more the design of the car with all the shadow lines down. As I said, a little bit of weathering, they'll be great. Uh, reliability, well, that remains to be seen. They're way too light, but I, unless you make them out of metal like Cato have done, there's no way you could put a weight in these. Absolutely nowhere, really. So, uh, run them either at the end of a train or with containers on. Now, I've run them in the middle of a train here. I've done a bit of testing. We'll be doing some more testing on the Birdwood sub uh, with some heavier trains. But so far, so good. No derailments. But of course, hey, there's no derailments on the Birdwood sub. <laughs> Come on. Uh, so, uh, as long as you adjust those trucks to have a little bit more play, as I say, when they come out from the factory, all of mine were slightly crooked because the screws were done up a little bit too tight. Uh, but apart from that, uh, very nice, very nice fine details. They're a pain to put together. If you're not careful, you will damage them when you roll all the cars over to do the screws up, to, put them to, to actually assemble the cars together to each other. That's a bit of a problem. I would not be taking them apart to take them to a show or you know modular layouts or whatever unless you took them in a three pack and kept them together, otherwise you'll just end up breaking every bit off them, like I've, I've already broken three hammers off them. Uh, but anyway, overall, very nice. Would I buy them again? Well, I already have four sets, so I probably would for, for a, uh, a good price. Model train stuff had them for a good price, but very nice. Yeah, I, I, I'd say very nice, apart from the little quirks to get them to run properly. The, the bolster, the... Uh, Draft gear boxes. Kato, what were you smoking when you were thinking of that? Why, why would you make it hard for people to put KD couplers on your rolling stock? Oh, that's just insane. What, what are you doing? That's, uh, someone needs to have a talk to, to the management of Atlas and say, well, you know, that's just a stupid thing to do because it's very easy to damage the car taking those draft gear boxes off and putting the draft gear boxes on that will fit the KDs. Uh, what were you thinking? <laughs> really. But anyway... Um, yeah, apart from that, uh, and getting the trucks to run, they're, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. So I would probably give them, you know, 7 or 8 out of 10. But for presence on the layout, I'd give them a 9 out of 10. They just look, uh, they don't look plas plasticky. They look uh, metalish like the Kato ones. But they just have a feel about them. Oh, and before I forget, all your rivet counters... The couplers are the right height and the axle sets are engaged. Uh, they just look good. The lettering is really crisp and all that sort of crap. But you know me, I'm not really interested in that. For me, it's reliability, how they run, how easy are they to perform maintenance on and yeah, are they reliable? That's for me, it's mechanical stuff. They have to look good too. So these are a good, these would have to be as good as the next step down from Kato's. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the review and uh, I thought these needed it because I, I read a lot of negative reviews on them and I think uh, they need a positive a bit of a positive review with a bit of tuning a very nice set of well cast okay see you soon Hooroo. bye for now